Welcome to Kevin Deal Photography, where I take you on my journey through photography. On today's episode, I'm gonna teach you how to take modeling digitals. Welcome to today's episode. If you're not familiar with Kevin Deal Photography, we do gear reviews, tips, techniques, and tutorials, and sometimes we dive into film. If any of that sounds appealing to you, click the subscribe button below. If you're a photographer who shoots models, chances are at some point you've been asked to take their digitals, often referred to as Polaroids. So what are digitals? Digitals are a natural picture of a model that simply shows what they look like. Okay, well, why is that a big deal? Well, it's a big deal because when you look at pictures of models and magazines and things like that, they're put together, they have very elaborate makeup, sometimes they have hair extensions on, and sometimes they're wearing clothing that kind of hides their figure. That doesn't really give a prospective client or a modeling agency a clear picture of what a model actually looks like. So the industry requires that models submit pictures of themselves where they're not put together so uh, people can kind of picture how to market them or how to use them for a particular project. So why do models get digitals? Well, sometimes they chop off their hair, uh, sometimes they're auditioning for a job that requires it, uh, sometimes they're an up-and-coming model who hasn't made digitals yet and they're trying to get signed with an agency, maybe they're unhappy with their agency and they want to go to a new agency. The point being that there are many reasons why models get their digitals done. And as a photographer, if you are asked to take digitals, it's your job to understand what they need to show up with and how to take the pictures. And we're gonna dive into that in today's episode. But if you're a model watching this, I'm gonna have advice that you can follow as well. So stick around. You may wonder why they're called Polaroids because back in the day, what we call digitals today were taken on Polaroids. And the reason we took them on Polaroids is because photography is not the focal point of what's going on here. You just need to get a very quick picture of what somebody looks like and Polaroids could get that job done. We didn't want to invest a bunch of money into that because film does cost money and Polaroid film is relatively cheap. So what are some tips to making a great digital? Well, let's first start off with, if you're a model watching, you need to get your appropriate measurements together before you get your digitals done. So when you submit your digitals, you'll have your measurements put together. I'm not gonna tell you how to do measurements in this episode. Uh, I'm sure if you search YouTube, you can learn how to properly take your measurements. Chances are you probably already know how to take your measurements, but if you're a model watching, you need to know that you need to have your measurements together uh, when you have your digitals done. If you're a photographer watching this, you do need the model to show up to the set in the proper attire and with the proper makeup. So for photographers, uh, you may just be assuming, well, the model's gonna just show up with everything they need and I just have to take my pictures. And that's not necessarily true. A lot of models who show up on your set are new models who may not understand what makes a great digital and what they're supposed to show up with on set. So when the model arrives, you want them to arrive with little to no makeup. Uh, if they do wear makeup, very light foundation. And then if they do have breakouts, it's okay for them to wear concealer. Uh, for their uh, outfit, you want black, neutral, form-fitting clothes, usually something like a tank top or something like these uh, tight pants, something like uh, jeans. And then lift your feet up because I don't have the, something like platforms, skinny heels, stilettos, something that elevates their legs because uh, that's what modeling agencies want to see. So this is how you would arrive. Uh, it's your job as a photographer to make sure that the model knows to arrive like this. A lot of models who are getting their digitals done for the first time are new models and they don't necessarily know how they're supposed to arrive. So make sure they're not arriving in baggy clothes with a face full of makeup because then you're not gonna take digitals that are worth anything. Now let's talk photography, uh, the probably what most of you all are interested in. Uh, any camera will do, so don't stress what camera you use. Uh, just to be clear, you can actually take digitals on an iPhone. Uh, they do not have to be something that is just masterful. Uh, and as a matter of fact, you need to dumb down your photography. If you decide that you wanna pull out your, well, your 14 to 35 and do these crazy wide angle shots, or maybe you wanna do that clamshell headshot, slick headshot photography, that Peter Hurley look, this is not the project you're supposed to do that on. You need to dumb down your photography, but you need to follow specific steps to make sure you get a good digital. So, I often will shoot 
on a 50 millimeter lens. And the reason why is because 50 millimeter is basically our normal field of view. It's how we see the world. It's not gonna distort things too much. Uh, and so I tend to use a 50 millimeter, but a zoom will do. If you have a 24 to 105 or a 24 to 70 or whatever, something that can get to about 50 millimeters is what you wanna try to use. Um, you know, don't shoot at a shallow depth of field. This is not the time to start shooting at 1.2 and having distracting backgrounds. As I said, background needs to be neutral. There needs to be nothing distracting in the background. So you typically wanna stop down when you shoot these shots uh, and you wanna use a non-distorted uh, focal length, something like 50 millimeter. So uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, models get their digitals done for several reasons. So for instance, uh, if you look at these pictures that I'm showing you that I took of Sophia a year ago, you'll see that her hair is different than it is right now. So when models get drastic haircuts uh, or maybe uh, they get a different hair color, something like that, uh, they'll update their digitals so people know what they currently look like. I'm gonna be recording internally in my camera as I pose Sophia so you can see the different poses and how you're supposed to take them inside of your camera. So let's get started. So as you can see with Sophia here, we don't have crazy shadows on her. Uh, as far as editing, you see these little uh, screws that are in here and you can take those out in post-production if you want. But uh, we're gonna start off with a headshot. So with the headshot, it's gonna be just below the chest and just above the head. Uh, and she's gonna give me just a few different types of looks. So here we go, here we go. Give me a little, little warmer Sophia. Beautiful. Awesome. All right, now, hold on a second, there we go. That's what I was looking for. All right, now go ahead and I'm gonna move back a little bit. Give me like a, yeah, straight on. This is gonna be like three quarters. Here we go. Beautiful. Now, give me a three quarter turn. Right about there, too much. I need to see your face right about there. Now keep your face, uh, face a little bit to me. There we go. Perfect. Awesome, now fully to the side. Perfect. Now, give me the three quarter turn the other way. I like to give three quarter turns both ways because some people have a, a side that they like. Perfect, just like that. Awesome. Now, all the way to the side. Perfect. Now go ahead and give me uh, just some different personality shots. Here we go. some more shots down around the, the arms uh, down low like that awesome perfect great job uh, one other thing you should keep in mind as photographers is keep the camera about level with the chest because if you shoot from too far down below while the legs will look nice and long the torso will look small and you'll kind of be shooting up the nose, which you don't want to do. You also don't want to shoot from above because then you'll make the model's legs look small. And I don't know a model in the world who wants their legs to look uh, smaller. So keep it around chest level when you're shooting. All right, so we're going to do full body now. Go for it. There we go, full on. Beautiful. Excellent, now give me a three quarter. Head a little bit more, there we go. Perfect, same, head in a little, perfect, awesome. Now uh, give me a full side, uh, a little less, right there. Now give me full other side, awesome. And now just give me whatever you want, just personality. Straight on. Excellent. So models will also ask you sometimes to take pictures of them in swimsuits. Uh, it's actually December, almost Christmas, a few days before Christmas, uh, which is swimsuit season because that's when they shoot all the swimsuit lines for the summer. So don't be surprised if a model reaches out to you in like November, December and asks you to do digitals in a swimsuit. And when you're shooting a model in a swimsuit, it's just the same types of digitals you took when they were in the form-fitting clothes. You do the headshot, you do the three-quarter shot, you do the full body shot. 
But guys, you gotta get your digitals done too. Uh, this is really the only spot in my house I can kind of show you this is not ideal. I'm taking stuff down from Christmas as you can see over my shoulder through the mirror. I'm gonna give you a few pointers on how to do modeling digitals as men. I'm gonna do them myself and clearly I'm not a model. Uh, I mean, come on, when you look at this physique, don't you think that like Ford and Elite are knocking on my door? Okay, maybe not. Um, but if I can do uh, poses for digitals, then I certainly hope you can, because if you can't, uh, I'm not sure why you're trying to get into modeling. So I'm gonna show you uh, how men should do posing and what they're supposed to wear. Uh, first and foremost, let's talk about what they're supposed to wear. So as you can see right here, I'm just wearing like a form-fitting plain shirt. You don't want graphics on your shirt or plaid or anything like that. It just shows off your arms and your physique. Uh, as far as pants, it's kind of the same thing. Uh, I'm wearing some form-fitting pants. You could wear jeans, uh, skinny jeans, anything like that that shows off your legs. Just don't wear baggy pants. And then for shoes, I mean, I'm just wearing my Adidas, nothing crazy. Don't wear your Air Jordans that have like neon on them. And as I showed you with Sophia, uh, sometimes women will do some shots in their swimsuits. Uh, with men, uh, sometimes they're gonna want you to do some shots with no shirt on. So do the, the head shot, the three quarters and the full body with the form fitting clothes, and then do that same set with no shirt on. You, you want me to take my shirt off? I doubt it, so I'm not going to, but, uh, but yes, keep all that in mind and let's go over some posing real quick. So for guys, 90% is finding stuff to do with your hands that look nice and natural. Uh, pockets are always your friend. So stuff like hands in the back pockets, one hand in the front pocket, cross your arms, and then change up your emotions while you do it. So, you know, you can sit there and just go, <laughs> you know, laugh, don't, don't be afraid. These are still frames. Nobody's gonna like, hear you in your dumb laugh. This isn't the time to do all these crazy, you know, poses. Just keep everything kind of in a base. Show what you look like. That's the whole point of digitals. Am I approachable? Uh, what do I look like naturally? This is what you look like naturally when you're standing on a street corner. You just kind of have your arms crossed, you know? That's it, that's just really it. If you're a guy, don't overthink it. Just uh, do what comes naturally to you. So let's recap today's episode. If you're a model watching this episode, here's a few things that you just need to remember. Show up with little to no makeup, very little base, and maybe only some concealer. Show up with form-fitting clothes, preferably black, along with skinny heels that are either black or nude. And also something that I didn't touch upon, which is show a diverse personality. Uh, I know a lot of you who are watching this want to do the Zoolander blue steel face all the time, like Mugatu's in the audience uh, trying to watch and be impressed. However, uh, even though it would be great to walk for Louis Vuitton and people like that, uh, the majority of you watching this probably aren't in New York, Milan, London, or Paris, which is where most fashion happens. So instead of Louis Vuitton being your client, it's likely going to be somebody like Walmart and commercial projects require personality. So when you're doing your range of uh, faces and things like that, make sure you throw in a few smiles. For photographers, let's do some recapping on what you need to do to make sure that the digital session goes perfectly. Let's talk about lighting. For lighting, you typically want to use soft diffuse lighting, indirect lighting coming through something large like a window, and then you have something like a white wall or a reflector or even a sheet to fill in the shadow side. You do not want to sculpt shadows. You do not want heavy shadows. This isn't that type of project. Uh, if you find yourself in bad weather, then you can always use something like a large 70 inch uh, rear umbrella, which is what I use when the weather is bad. But Keep in mind, you are not the star of the show. Um, you know, use any camera that you have access to, use focal lengths that don't distort too much, but keep in mind that if uh, the photography looks amazing, you probably went too far. As far as posing goes, don't direct the model too much. As you saw in the video, I would say things like, okay, let's do a three quarter turn. And then I allow Sophia or any model to get into a base pose and then naturally do what they want to do with their arms, with their legs and things like that. Because if you over direct them, all you're going to translate on camera is someone who is being directed. And that's not the point of what you're trying to get across when you're taking digitals. Another thing to keep in mind about posing is that 
overly dramatic posing doesn't necessarily make for good digital. So when they put their hands over their head or they take their hands and put them in and put their elbows forward, that does look great in fashion photography. However, that doesn't necessarily translate well for digitals. That's probably not what the modeling agency is looking for. That's probably not what clients are looking for. However, when a model does that on set, I allow them to go forward with it. The reason why is that those overly dramatic poses sometimes can relax them, can help them get into their groove. And then when they hit those base poses that are being sought after for digitals, they do those with more relaxation, they do it uh, more naturally, and then that comes across on camera. Now let's talk about what to charge for digitals. That's a complex question. If I'm laying on my couch watching TV and a model says, hey, I wanna go to your studio and I want you to do some digitals for me, well, that's a 30 minute drive for me and then I gotta set up. So I absolutely will charge in that scenario. However, I have a great relationship with models. Digitals are something that they get often. And frankly, the little bit of money that I make off of them isn't really that important to me for digitals. So what I do is when we are working together on a larger project together, right before they go into hair and makeup, I will just pull them aside. We'll do their digitals if they have to do um, swimsuit on top of that. The whole process takes no more than 15 minutes. So you just knock that out right before they get into hair and makeup. They just arrive with minimal makeup, which is what they're usually required to do in hair and makeup anyway. As far as editing is concerned, way less is more. And so uh, outside of getting my exposure corrected, outside of getting my white balance corrected, and occasionally changing shadows, I don't do anything. The only other thing that I will sometimes do is if there is something distracting in the background, like a wall plug or maybe just some nails in the wall that were hanging pictures that I took off for the shots, I'll get rid of those. But if you are finding yourself having to remove more than that out of a backdrop, you probably chose the wrong backdrop in the first place. As far as shooting, I tend to shoot everything in landscape. That's why I use a high megapixel camera. As a matter of fact, I accidentally shot today's episode in a 1.6 crop, but even then the files are much larger than a model needs. I'm still using a 50 millimeter lens, so everything's gonna be nice and non-distorted. So it still turned out great, but using high megapixel cameras is always a good thing. You don't know how people are gonna crop things, so I tend to take my shots a little wider than they need to be. That way, if I screw up, I'm good to go. I also sometimes will miss a pose, like maybe I'm asking a model to give me a profile shot uh, at a full body, and I nail that, but maybe I don't nail the three quarter shot. I can go back into that full size shot and just crop it to a three quarter and nobody notices. So uh, that's something to keep in mind is it's always good to take a slightly wider picture than you need and be able to crop it down later. And speaking of crop, I do tend to crop at a two by three aspect ratio because that is what we view media on on our smartphones. And I'll be honest, a lot of modeling agencies, they're just looking at digitals on their phones. They're not pulling aside a laptop or anything like that. Now let's finally talk about deliverables. Uh, when you are editing a model's pictures, I say give them as many as you possibly can. There are small nuances in their hands and things like that that we may not pick up on as photographers that may drive them crazy. So give them the freedom of choice. Obviously eliminate the shots where their face looks weird because it's in between facial expressions, the shots where their eyes are closed, get rid of those, uh, but you really don't know what the modeling agencies and what the clients are ultimately looking for. And remember, this is about them, not about you. So that concludes today's episode. I hope you found it useful. I hope you found it uh, educational. Uh, if you do like what you saw today, tell me about it in the comments below. Do you have any uh, tips that you use to get better digitals? tell me in the comments below. And finally, if you did like this episode, you do like this channel, I uh, humbly ask you, click the subscribe button below. I appreciate your support uh, each and every time I put in an episode, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.